is about bad. I have a full tape measure in here. Should I be filming this after a 10 hour rehearsal? Probably not. Am I going to? Yup. Hey there, thanks for stopping by. My name's Emma B, and today I will be showing y'all what I keep in my wardrobe bag. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, I worked wardrobe crew over this summer for Opera Theatre St. Louis and I'm now working wardrobe at school and I was doing this jokingly with one of my friends during a break at rehearsal of showing them what's in my bag and they were like, this is such a funny little like YouTube kind of thing, like what's in my backpack? So then I decided to take the bit and just keep going and now I'm going to show y'all what I keep in my bag. I also thought this could be kind of helpful for anybody who's doing wardrobe crew for the first time or that sort of thing. I feel like a lot of times, not just in places I've done wardrobe, but I've heard it from other people as well, is that wardrobe crew ends up being actors who didn't get cast. A lot of times, even if that's not the case, people tend to look down on the wardrobe as like less of like a technical aspect of technical theater. When in reality, wardrobe does a lot of really important work. I love doing wardrobe. It's something I do hope I get to keep doing professionally, although I eventually want to go more into the design aspects. I think it's also really important to know and understand the technical aspect. And wardrobe crew tends to be that bridge of the technical aspect to the performers themselves. I joke sometimes that I'm like a mini therapist for them backstage, but it happens. I hype them up. I like hyping up my performers. It's an important part of what I do. It's helping them get into the clothes, but then also helping them get on stage. Not always in like a like stage fright kind of thing, but just making sure that they're comfortable and they feel ready and that we're working together to get them out on stage looking the best they can so that they get to do their job too. My job is to make sure that they can do their job on stage, not committing any public acts of indecency. So with that, I wanted to show y'all what I have. So I'm still in my tech blacks from rehearsal today. I'm just wearing black yoga pants from Costco. I got them a couple years ago. They have not had them since, and they are the most comfortable pants I own. So I wear them for my like 10 hour rehearsals the Saturday before show week, like that kind of thing. And so then my gym t-shirts, which are the like athletic material, the sweat wicking stuff, just transitioned into my tech shirts, which is why the majority of my gym t-shirts are black. Different theaters have different rules around this. My school has the rule of shoulders to toes. That includes arms. One of my other tech friends recommended getting tattoo sleeve covers. And these are like sunscreen protectors for people who have tattoos. They're like the same sweat wicking material. They don't really add a lot of heat, but they cover your arms so that my pasty arms aren't showing backstage, which is the goal. I have two pairs of these and I can switch them out as I wash them. I also have black compression gloves. I have the ones with like the grip on them so that that way like I can carry things and it's, you know, it's all functional but it means that the only things you can see backstage in like full darkness are my fingertips and my face, which is always really entertaining, but it means that if I'm trying to like say something with my hands or like point somewhere, people can tell what I'm saying, especially if I put them in front of my shirt, because there's such a high contrast. <laughs> For my tech shoes, I have a pair of black high top Converse that I put just like Dr. Scholl's inserts in, because Converse don't have any support. Oh, one other thing I carry along with my wardrobe bag is my Snips necklace. If you watched my last video where I made a dress, I showed you all these. These are a new pair that I got. Having a cap on them is super important so we don't stab anybody. This one I really like because I have, I'll keep it around my neck and I can just pull it off and use it. And I even used it, I used it today in rehearsal because somebody's elastic laces were too long and you tripped over them and we were able to trim them backstage really quick without having to like try and find scissors or anything. I will try and find a link to everything I've shown y'all in this video and anything else I show. Some things are a couple years old at this point, but anything I can find I will include. Without further ado, my wardrobe belt bag. My belt bag is actually a nurse's bag off of Amazon. It's got an adjustable waistband, which I really like because then when I need to have it really tight around my waist, I'm like running across backstage to get something, I can have it super tight and just kind of yank the strap. But I also like keeping it a little looser, specifically after I've had a big meal, but also I can then like sort of spin it around and have it on my back while I'm doing quick changes so it doesn't get in the way while I'm trying to get things done. The first thing you might notice are the safety pins. I try to keep a range of size easily accessible in the front of my belt bag. So in the first big pocket here is this, there's a magnetic clasp on the front and inside is a little first aid kit. I try to keep different 
shades of flesh tone band-aid, as well as some gauze pads and some like neosporin little packets or like antiseptic wipes as well. I'm very clumsy and so I'm the one who ends up using the band-aids most often. Then these three like pencil pouches right here, I use one of them for my black pens, which I often use for run sheets. And then I have a pencil and a highlighter and the pencil is just, it's just good to have a pencil. Like I can't think of a time where having a pencil was like a bad thing. Well, I usually just have a pencil, and I have a mechanical pencil because I don't want to have to try and sharpen a pencil. The other pencil holder just has bobby pins on it. And I usually try to have some blonde bobby pins on here too. Currently I only have black and brown, but it's not often that we figure out we need bobby pins and we don't have time to get them from a dressing room. But again, it can't ever hurt to have on you, and I also will sometimes use them on myself. I always try to have my hair pulled back. Right now I just have them in a big claw clip, but occasionally my bangs are just like one day and I just need to pin back and we're halfway through rehearsal and I just need them out of my face. Bobby pins. There's also this little like loop on here that I don't currently have anything on right now. The main compartments of the belt bag, I like that there's two. One of the pockets I often end up storing protein bars or granola bars in. Those are my best friend in tech. Oh, we're taking a tent? Okay, I'm gonna sit down on the ground wherever I'm at and also eat food. I also keep a little travel size thing of gum. In my belt bag, I typically will put like a cotton ball or a tissue in here so that you can't hear that. I don't want the performers to have to smell whatever I just ate for dinner. And that's just a me thing. I don't think they normally can. It's not like I'm eating just like a straight up onion for dinner. In this pocket, I also will my personal chapstick. That one feels pretty self-explanatory. As well as some hair clips. A lot of this is just just in case stuff that either has been helpful at one point or I have been without and have been like, it would be nice to have a hair clip on me right now. And then I will also keep a copy of run the run sheet in my bag. I'm not gonna actually show y'all the run sheet because it has people's names on it. And I tend to take notes directly on the printed run sheets that I get. My notes are like, after this quick change, this piece of clothing items needs to go over here. Or leave this clothing item here because they're changing back into it at the same spot. Like that sort of thing. Occasionally it'll be like, this performance water bottle will be at this spot when they quick change. Afterward, can bring it back to the dresser. And then in my back pocket, I have a couple things as well. I forgot I had this until earlier when I was showing my friend what's in my bag. I have a full tape measure in here. Look, after a certain point of working with clothes, you just like have tape measures everywhere. I just find them. Another thing I have in here is a fidget spinner, which is also black. This I got for like a dollar. It's just nice to have if I'm sitting backstage, I got five minutes until my next change. I'm just gonna sit here, chilling. It's also quiet enough. This is a good little like fidget for downtime, which isn't that often, but you know, it can't, again, it can't hurt to have. How many times can I say that in this video? My next thing in my bag is probably my most important thing. This is the thing that gets me through rehearsals and shows. Uh, it is a bound index card notebook and they're perforated so that you can tear them out once you're done with them or if you need to pass them off to someone. And I also keep just like a little baby pen with them, but it's usually like scribbled in the dark during the show of like, so-and-so needs this or small rip in cuff of shirt on this person. And so a lot of times I'll either report them to the wardrobe head or if I'm the acting wardrobe head, I report them to the costume shop for them and me because I also work in the costume shop for us to repair the next day. Because I guarantee these like little ticky tack notes, I'm never going to remember them after running around at rehearsal all evening. It's also why I write down everything on my run sheet. I'd rather have it written down and not need it than need it and not have it written down. And also because paperwork doesn't always update immediately. But today we figured out something right before our second run through that needed to change on the paperwork and so we all changed it on our own paperwork. I know some people will like still try and memorize it as like a point of pride, but my brain is full. It's got enough stuff in there already. I'm good. I, I will just keep referencing my sheet happily. The final pocket on my belt bag I love, and it is the one that's sort of tucked on the back, and so it ends up sitting like right up against my stomach or against my hip, which fits my phone, which is perfect. I like having my phone in there, and I have it on silent, but that way I have the ability to check it, and I can also use it as a flashlight, because I don't have that flashlight on me. I think when this bag, if it does ever fall apart, I'm simply just going to buy another one, because I really like this, and I think it's just a really good tool for anybody working wardrobe. I will say I've also been told I look super professional just walking into a space with this and that like I know what I'm doing. I've only ever walked into wardrobe spaces pretending like I know what I'm doing until I actually know what I'm doing. Especially on like quick changes and stuff and convincing actors that you've got yourself together because I'm prepared. So clearly, you're in good hands. 
I did also want to clarify the difference between wardrobe and costume week, just because it's a really common misconception. So the costume designer, they are the ones that go, this is, these are the clothes we're making, these are what are going on the performers. And then the costume crew will make those costumes or do necessary repairs and that sort of thing. The wardrobe crew are the ones dressed in all black, backstage, doing quick changes, doing laundry after the show, getting the actors dressed and all that. That's what I've been doing. I think it's so important to have that experience to be a designer because as someone who's worked wardrobe on a couple shows now, we know when a designer doesn't have wardrobe experience. It shows, which isn't a knock on the designer's abilities as a designer. And as a future designer, I would like to be a designer that people want to work with. That's a, that's a good way to get hired and get hired again. I think it's time for me to go to bed. I will film a real outro, but I will do it holding my dinosaur, because I am a grown lady. And I do what I want. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all next time. Toodles! My Irish ancestors did not get a lot of sunlight, necessarily. And it shows. It does show. I'm so awake. I'm so awake. I am the most awake anyone has ever been. I'm gonna... I'm gonna manifest it.